If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. In order to determine the amount of current that's flowing through the 12 ohm resistors, we can first draw in the current I3 moving to the right. We know that when that current reaches the junction that's marked E, some of the current must travel down in this direction and the rest of the current must travel to the right in this direction. Now, since these resistances are equal, that means that the two amp current will partition itself exactly in half. In other words, one amp of the current will flow down through the first 12 ohm resistor and one amp will flow to the right through the second 12 ohm resistor. And so the correct answer to part A will be one amp will be flowing through each of the 12 ohm resistors. On to part B, which asks what is the value of the EMF, epsilon 1. So in order to calculate or determine this EMF of the battery, what we can do is use the so-called loop rule. And to use that rule, what we do is pick an arbitrary starting point, and we're going to move in a clockwise fashion around the outside of the circuit. Now we might be able to solve this by choosing a different loop, but it turns out that this loop will work just fine. So when we start from this point and move across the battery, we're moving from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of that battery, but we don't know the voltage. So for now, we're just going to call that epsilon one. Now, as we continue to move around the circuit, we do not encounter any circuit elements until we hit this resistor right here. Now, in that resistor, we can see that the current of one amp is moving in this direction here. Now, we know that the voltage change across a resistor is given by the amount of current times the resistance. Since we are moving with the current, that will represent a negative potential change. And what we'll do following this equation is multiply the current, which we determined to be one amp, times the resistance of 12 ohms. We will continue our way around the loop until we return to our starting point. At that moment, we would set the loop rule equation equal to zero, and then all we have to do is multiply these two terms and add to the other side, and we can see that epsilon one is going to equal 12 volts. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Now, to determine the current I2, it will be helpful to first draw in the current. We can choose to draw the current either upward or downward. The choice is ours, and if we make the wrong choice, we can always fix it later. So for now, let's just assume that the current I2 is flowing upward. We can then apply the loop rule one more time to determine the value of I2. For example, let's assume that we started at this point and we moved in a counterclockwise fashion around this loop right here. As we move around this loop, we will keep track of the voltage changes. So we'll begin and we will encounter this battery marked with epsilon two, and we can see that we're moving from the negative to the positive plate of that battery, and so that will represent a positive four volt potential change. We will then move through this resistor, and since we're flowing with the current I2, we're going to have a negative potential change. And that potential change will be the resistance multiplied by the current. We will continue our way around the loop until we encounter this battery. Now notice that this time we're moving from the positive to the negative plates of the battery, so that will represent a negative potential change. And we know that potential change will be 12 volts from our earlier work. We then complete the trip around the loop so we can set the equation equal to zero and solve for I2. Perhaps we can subtract four minus 12. We will add the eight over to the right side and then divide by negative one. And when we do that, we can see that I2 turns out to have a value of negative eight. Now, the negative sign is problematic. We can't really have a negative current. So what that means is that our original direction of pointing the current I2 upward was incorrect. All we have to do is go back and change the direction. So in fact, I2 was actually flowing downward. Once we make that change, we can drop this negative sign right here, and I suppose this guy becomes happy. We can now easily find the current marked I1, and to do that, we can draw the direction of the current. Again, we might need to guess as to the direction but eventually we'll be able to figure out if it's correct. Let's just say that I1 is flowing in this direction. 
Now look carefully at junction C, and you can see that I1 is flowing into that junction. I3 was flowing out of the junction, and I2 also was flowing out of the junction. Now we know that the current that flows into the junction must equal the current that flows out of the junction. Again, I1 is flowing into the junction, and I2 and I3 are flowing out, so we can include those on the right-hand side of the equation. We know the value of I2 to be 8 amps, and I3 was given to us as 2 amps, so that means I1 will equal 10 amps. So again, I1 is 10 amps, and I2 is 8 amps, and those are the answers to part C. Now, for the final part, notice that the current I2 is flowing downward, so it's flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal of the battery. And anytime current flows from positive to negative terminal, we know that the battery is absorbing energy. So that would be the correct answer to that portion of part D. And then to actually calculate the power, we simply use the power equaling the current multiplied by the potential. The current that's flowing through this battery was I2, and then the potential will be epsilon2. Recall that we had just figured out I2 to be 8 amps, and then epsilon2 was given to us as 4 volts. And so the answer turns out to be 32 watts worth of power, and again, energy is being absorbed in that situation. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. Remember, you're welcome to send in your own question to this email address, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.